Ladies and gentlemen, as the director, it's my pleasure and privilege to welcome you to the artist talk with Richard Serra. Thank you very much, Richard, for being with us today. We know after a long marathon of working in, on the installation of the press conferences and, uh, um, op and opening ceremonies, we're very grateful that you agreed to uh, speak to the public this morning. Richard does not need um, an introduction, and this is an artist talk and now the director's talk. Um, the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm here is also to say that it was announced that Oliver Wick, the curator of the Brancusi and Sarah exhibition that wow. you're seeing in our house, who was announced to, um, to moderate this talk, can unfortunately not be here because of a family tragedy. So um, we apologize for that, but we found the best possible replacement for this, which is overnight <laughs> Martin Schwander. Martin Schwander um, is a curator here in Basel. Um, some of you may have seen his uh, uh, exhibition here, the Venice exhibition in this house, but he's actually worked with Richard Serra for many years, and Richard Serra's intersection would not be standing on the Theaterplatz without Martin Schwander. So thank you very much, Martin, um, yeah. for oh. stepping in, and now I'm handing over to you. Thank you very much, Sam, for your introduction. And I also welcome you uh, to this uh, artist talk with uh, Richard Serra. I think it's a, a great privilege to have Richard uh, with us this morning. Uh, Richard is a great artist, but he is also a brilliant uh, thinker and speaker. And I think he's his uh, statements about art, about his art, but also about art of other artists, about uh, society, political aspects are may sometimes as sharp and precise as his sculptures. So I'm pretty sure that we will have uh, spent an uh, interesting hour with you. Um, that <laughs> remains to be seen. Huh? <laughs> Never mind. No, no, I hope so. We all hope that we have a great time with you here. And um, I don't want to start with the exhibition, with the Bancusi richard Serra uh, combination, also not with your sculptural concept. I would like to start with the drawings, because uh, I think it's an uh, important aspect of your work. And we have two rooms dedicated to your drawings in this exhibition. One here, one upstairs, the small first space in the, in the exhibition. And actually, uh, you, you just opened uh, your first retrospective, of uh, drawing retrospective, at the Metropolitan Museum in New York, a touring exhibition. And I would like to know um, what is your relationship to drawing and what is the importance of drawing in your work and how does it relate to your uh, sculptural concept? Um. The drawings that I make are a completely independent, autonomous body of work. And when I first started drawing, like everyone, um, was the problem of figure ground. How do you mark on a white piece of paper? And once you make one mark, um, you have to you probably divide the paper. Or if you make two marks, you're probably into a construction. And what I had to decide after um, the beginning drawings that I made as a student and the drawings that I first started to make in New York was how to get away from anecdotal drawings or drawings that uh, were representational of my sculpture. And as the drawings developed, I started to do installation drawings that dealt with um, the delineation of the architecture or defined a space within the architecture that was different than the intentional space of the architecture. Um, but I also have continued to make uh, drawings on paper the drawings upstairs in the small room, the eight drawings, were, uh, in my um, mind's eye, dealing with uh, measure and weight in relationship to the page and elevation in relation to the page. And those small eight drawings upstairs were the precursor for the drawings you see down here. This set here and this set here are one work. And um, because you're all credited up against them, they're hard to see but they are exactly the same measure. That means that the, the, same, the vertical drawing is the same measure as the horizontal drawing just turned on its side. When that happens and there's a rotation or a shift in weight, 
you register the drawing differently in terms of your perception of the mass and you might not realize it's the same dimension until you think about rotating it in your head and what it means to look at a vertical plane that's the same as a horizontal plane. All of that may not be interesting to one who's perceiving the drawing at all or you may not have to know that, but it becomes a subtext for me to deal with that kind of mass in relation to its vertical and horizontal perception. The other two drawings just deal with their vertical mass in relation to the plane as weight contained within a space. Um, but the more progressive drawings that I do, and most of the drawings at the Met that define the show at the Met, deal with canvas on the wall in defining space in relation to the contained space of the architecture. But they're not here, so it's very yeah. difficult to talk about something that we can't see. But you, <coughs> you did such an installation in Basel, in, I think, in 88 at uh, the Kunsthalle. Yeah, and that was big, actually of big, those horizontal yeah. big installations big installation, I've done. Yeah. That was very, very memorable for me, and it was a drawing that I really liked very much. But those drawings, you know, once you do them, um, no one wants to retain <laughs> them, and so they're very difficult to do again. And yeah. you don't get too many options to do large installation drawings in place. So. What I would say is the most progressive aspect of my installation drawings are few and far in between because museums and or collectors are not tempted to give you a venue in order to do those works. Yes, okay. So most of them yeah. are done, rolled and destroyed, or some of them are, are done again. or re Like the one we did, at, there's one at the Modern um, that's 20 feet high, two planes facing each other. When we take it to San Francisco, because the ceiling is lower, we're going to have to cut it down. Cut it down, okay. In, in this um, Metropolitan exhibition, you also show for the first time sketchbooks. Mm -hmm. So why, uh, why did you take this decision to, um, sh to give this inside view of your yeah. creative process? Yeah. And One of the okay. things that I've done since I was a student, uh, an undergraduate student, is I've always um, carried notebooks with me as a way of keeping daily notations, whether they're notations of things I'm looking at, whether they're rigging instructions, whether they're details of things I'm interested in, whether they're um, other sculptures that I see, whether they're... Um, I, well, when I was here last time, I went back to see uh, Ronchon and made drawings there. Um, it's a way for me to keep my hand and eye nimble, and I think your eye is kind of a muscle, and to keep it in shape, one of the ways that I do it is drawing, but it's something that I've always done, and for me, I, I see it as an alternative language. On the other hand, I don't see my notebook drawings or notations as works of art. I just see them as a way of keeping in tune with where I've been, what I've done, and almost like a catalog of uh, the years that have passed by. So. In the modern show, there are notebooks from Ranchon, there are notebooks from uh, South America, from Machu Picchu, there are notebooks from Canada, there are notebooks from various sites um, that where I've traveled and made markings. And in that sense, they relate somewhat not to day books that photographers would take, like Weston, or um, if you know uh, Corbusier's notebooks, they have that kind of daily inscription that's really not for publication. I put them in the Met show because I thought that they would give a kind of grounding to the show if people wanted to know who is this person and what does he do and how does he think and how does he see when he's not doing just large installation drawings, how does he keep track of his time? And I don't do it with photographs, I, I do it with notations and notebooks. And I've done it all my life. And I'll probably give them all to Yale. And there are hundreds of them. Hundred, yeah. 